Do you want to check out IT Pro TV but aren't ready to commit? We're making a few episodes from our most popular courses free for you to try here on YouTube so you can see what they're all about. Enjoy this episode and head over to itpro.tv when you're ready to see the full course. Welcome to IT Pro TV. This is CEH. I'm Kathy. This is Daniel. Hey, hey. Welcome to the show. I'm glad to be here. Hopefully you are as well. We're going to chat about some attack classifications. Yes, we are. We've got, uh, yeah, a few cla uh, classifications that we got to go through our attack classifications, as I should properly announce it as, right? And there's just five of them, actually. I, we say a lot. There's five. I wish there was not one, but there are, <laughs> right? So the five that we need to go through today are going to be passive attacks, active attacks, close in attacks. Then we have insider attacks and distribution attacks. All of them are a little bit different than each other, obviously, and that's why we have the different types, but uh, those nuances are what's gonna help us on the exam and in real life land as well. Yeah, and if you didn't write those down, don't worry. Because <laughs> we're gonna say yeah, them again. This isn't the end of the show. <laughs> Good news. <laughs> uh, let's start off with the passive attacks. Okay, yeah, great, yeah. right? So let's do passive attacks. This is an interesting type of attack, actually, because it almost seems uh, contradictory, right? Right, you're just hanging Passive out. attack. Right, because attack is like a verb, right? I'm doing something. Uh, so what we mean when we say a passive attack is this is very <sighs> laid back. Like you're sitting in your lounge chair, you're sipping a Mai Tai, and you're going, what information about my target can I find just by kind of looking? You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> you probably don't, so let me clarify that a little bit. This is going to be looking for things on the network that are running in clear text, things like, if you're using a service that uses clear text passwords. I didn't have to really do anything other than look at the data on the wire to see, oh, there, there's a password. Someone's using a password there. Thank you. And I put that in my little dictionary of passwords. Uh, probably got grabbed the username as well, because if that password's in clear text, it's almost a guarantee that the username is also in clear text. And now I've got a set of credentials that I could enter the system with, right? So I'm looking for things like that. I'm looking for sensitive information. Maybe things like credit card numbers, personally identifiable information or PII, right? I'd love to get my hands on some of that. And if it's running through the clear, uh, it's just being put out on the wire and all I have to do is kind of reach out and grab it. Well, that's a passive attack. I'm not actually trying to like force my way or Jimmy into anything. I'm just gleaning that information that is made available from being a part of that network. So that's what we mean by uh, uh, passive attack. I do want to, uh, one more thing about that is this is a very difficult, nigh impossible attack to detect, right? So that's an important key takeaway about the passive attacks because you're not, you're not firing any bullets at your target, right? Mm. Stuff's just kind of falling in your lap. So it's really hard for them to detect whether or not that has occurred because nothing weird is actually happening on the network itself. So passive attacks. That's super interesting. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and it's like lazy man attacking. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like I said, you got your Mai Tai, toes in the sand. This is the idea. Yeah, of the I'll attack it when I have some yeah. time. <laughs> so what's the difference between that and active? Well, with active, you're, you're actually firing yeah, bullets okay. off. Let me give you some examples of a passive attack because maybe that'll help us with uh, seeing the differences. So with, an, with a passive attack, I'm just doing something like, sniffing the network, right? Using a, a packet analyzer, a wire sniffer, a packet sniffer, that kind of time, protocol analyzer, think, think Wireshark. Uh, if you don't know what Wireshark is, don't worry, we're gonna get to that. But that's the idea. I'm just grabbing that stuff. When it comes to a, an active attack, I am actually, I am starting to poke at things. I'm actually trying to see if I can get information by fiddling with the systems or network at large, okay? So uh, with active attacks, we're talking about the manipulation of data. We're talking about disruption of services. So I'm actually going after the services and maybe stopping people from gaining access to them. I'm also looking into breaking into or compromising either the uh, individual systems and or the network at large. So maybe I get access to one system and that becomes my pivot into the system at large. And now I've got full reign throughout their environment. That would be definitely a case of an active type of attack. Um, uh, talking about whether or not this can be detected. When you start firing bullets at your target, there's a good chance that it could be detected. 
Now, depending on how good you are at what you do, that may chance might be greater or smaller. Your mileage may vary, as they say. But there is a, absolutely a possibility of detection with these. Yeah, a little more risky. Yes, definitely that. So um, what about some examples of this? Yeah, let's, uh, let's talk about some examples. This is going to be your things like your denial of service attacks or your distributed denial of service attacks. We're, again, trying to stop those uh, people from gaining access to different services. Uh, password attacks. So there's an, uh, like an authentication mechanism that's taking usernames and passwords. I'm just going to try to break through that in some way, shape, or form. I can also do things like session hijacking, where I just take over your session and jump in as if I were you. And it goes, okay, uh, you're, you're you. That's fine. And I can now impersonate you. Uh, other things, privilege escalation. Maybe I've gained some access into the system, but I'm not fully vetted, if that makes any sense, where I don't have full control and I want to elevate. I want to go after or maybe move, uh, what is that, uh, horizontally versus vertically. Uh, so maybe not after administrative credits, maybe I'm just after Kathy's credits because she's in finance and I want to get after finance. So I don't need administrative credits necessarily. I just would need Kathy's, right? So uh, other things will be SQL injection. You probably have heard of SQL injection. That's another type of active attack, putting in uh, malformed SQL into a statement and trying to modify the system that way. Remote code execution, trying to get the system, the remote system to execute commands or code that I send it without authorization. Definitely good examples of active types of attacks. And you had mentioned uh, close-in attacks. Yes, so close-in attacks are really interesting. Yeah? Yeah. What are the, they? <laughs> well, this is the idea that through proximity of, uh, and this is mo and probably physical proximity, hmm. but not necessarily, but a lot of times it will be through physical proximity of my target, I will gather sensitive information. So let's say that I have physical proximity to my target's building. Maybe there's a common area I can go in, but work is being done. You know, a lot of people will go and sit in the lounge and they'll work on their laptop because it's just a more comfortable environment. Well, I could go into that environment and I could stand there and just kind of look over and see what you're talking about. What are you, what are you typing? What are you doing? Is any of that sensitive or confidential information? If so, that is a close in attack. I've gained proximity to you and therefore gleaned some of that sensitive or private information that shouldn't be um, exposed to the wild, right? So that is a close in. A lot of times uh, you'll see this as well through the idea of um, maybe uh, shoulder surfing, looking for passwords, also get into the idea of like dumpster diving and stuff. So we've um, I've heard a lot about insider attacks. Yeah. I watch a lot of movies. And you watch a lot of movies. Who doesn't, right? I love a good movie. I watch a lot of action movies. And so this is like a common term or a term that we hear quite often. Yes, so it what, is. what exactly does it mean? So it's, it's really interesting about insider attacks, also known as like insider threats. Probably sure. more commonly hear it as insider threats. Uh, but this is the idea that somebody in your organization is now like a double agent, right? Where they were a trusted person and they're abusing that trust to gain information for fun and profit. Mm, like a right? spy. Exactly, like a spy. A spy would be considered an insider threat. We allow them into our system and we give them trust and they abuse that trust against us. So, What are this, some ways they can do that? Yeah, and there's some good, this, I'm, I wanna kind of lay this out here really quickly though. This, this is one of the more, it could be one of the more devastating types of attacks, mm -hmm. right? And that's because of that trust we give them, right? So going back to your example idea, what does this look like? How does this work itself out in real life land? Well, if they have access to, you know, intellectual property, customer PII, you know, these are the kind of things that keep coming up. They can use that to sell it, right? They can get, get money based off it. So maybe that's their motivation. We'll kind of go back to our motivational. Um, money, money, money. Yeah, that money, money, money. We all love the money. But these are some of the ways in which they do this. Uh, there's a thing called pod slurping. This is fun, right? Wow, I've never I, heard of that. I know. I don't make up these <laughs> terms, but they can be a lot of fun to say. Pod slurping is where I use something like an iPod, which is a digital storage device, to exfiltrate that data incognito, Ooh. right? So I put the data that I'm trying to steal onto my iPod or whatever digital storage device that I have, and I, I can then walk it out under the guile of it. Oh, it's just my media player. 
And, you know, uh, phones would be more common what? these days. iPods aren't as popular as That's they once so were, but it still has the name pod slurping. Um, let's see here. You can steal devices. I can just walk right in and go, I wonder how much I can get for this bad boy and walk right out the door. I've actually seen that happen. No. Yeah. Yeah. My first IT job. What? This, this kid so that just worked with walked us. out the door. I was right young. Then? I was like 19. And a lot of the people that I worked with were young. And I was like, what's, what's uh, so-and-so over there doing? I don't know. Come to find out, they were loading computers into their no. car and selling them. Yes. What? Yes, ma'am. That's a, that's a prime example of an insider threat, right? right? Worked for the company. You trust them. You trust them. Right. We're IT. We, right. They're like, I mean, we, he's no to go one, home and fix it. I no one know. thinks anything of us taking right. a computer and putting it in our car. Right. Right? And yeah, he was, he was having a great time with that. Um, what else is another one? Uh, Close-in attacks actually would also kind of follow under this, right? Because of the idea of social engineering. Right. Remember, I said that close in attacks are typically through physical proximity, but that's not always the case. Sometimes I can as long as I have some sort of contact to the humans in the organization, I can leverage that contact to gain that sensitive information and access to that. Usually done through uh, the idea of social engineering, tricking you into divulging that information for me. Uh, so close in attacks kind of follow into this is if we're looking at the idea of social engineering. I do have uh, an article I brought up because I wanted to kind of give a little more meat to this bone. This is uh, K2 Enterprises, K2E.com. I got the uh, the article right there. It's forward slash articles, forward slash insider threats. I'll make sure that that link is in our notes for you, good folks. But they have some of the worst data breaches caused by malicious insiders. I will make this a little bit more readable with the font size, but they start talking about the different types of insider threats, which we don't have to get that deep into the weeds, but uh, very interesting information. Right down here is where we really want to see. We've got this Waymo thing. It's Google's self-driving car project. Suffered a malicious attack in 2016. This said the engineer reportedly unhappy with Google, prompting uh, his theft of more than 14,000 files containing intellectual property, right? And then goes into talk about what that looked like Anthem, which is an insurance um, company, they suffered a breach in 2017. 18,000 Medicare members had their records stolen by an, an employee of a third-party vendor. Oh, right? a so vendor. This, you got to watch out right, for them, yes, too. That's right. They are right? Not just the, the people in the building. Right. Yeah. Anybody associated with your company could be considered an insider threat. Boeing had one in, what was that? Does it say, did you give the, the date on that one? But they definitely had one, a victim of insider threats spent oh, several decades. That's look the, that's at that. Because it wow, went forever. Wow, that's a lot of years before Holy he was Holy Moses, man. Wow. They had, that, that's called bad. Yeah. That's real bad right and there. And skill. Uh, and looking, working for the Chinese intelligence stole hundreds of boxes worth of documents containing information about spacecraft and military ma manufacturing operations. Wow, that's crazy. Capital One, we're probably uh, familiar with that one. 2019 hacker knowingly exposed an insider breach at Capital One. So they had a breach and the insider exposed that the breach had occurred, uh, sharing their methods with colleagues over Slack, posting information on GitHub and bragging on social media. Wow. Don't you love how I, all these I, topics I, like- It's just so amazing when people do that. <laughs> it's, it's so amazing. What's wrong with people, right? <laughs> Damages of $150 million. These, these people are keeping us employed, Daniel. They surely are. <laughs> but there you go. There's some, um, right. some oh, what they would call insider attacks or insider threats. All right. So these obviously can be extremely devastating. Yeah. But so can the distribution attacks. Yes. How do those work? Yeah. Distribution attacks. These are more commonly called supply chain attacks. And this is where an attacker has access to either software or hardware of a vendor that their target is going to use. So let's say I want to go after, I don't know, the United States military or the governments, right? I would find one of the vendors of either the hardware or software or both that they use. And I would try to attack them plant myself in and then install something like malware into that software or device that is then going to be utilized by my actual target. So maybe my target has just got way too strong of a defense. I go after some lower hanging fruit that they trust. And because of that trust, I now have found my way inside my target's network and have access to it because I've installed the software that allows me to do that. So this is something that does happen quite often. Uh, I say, I, let, me, let me walk that back. I say quite often, we don't know how often it happens. It, it doesn't get reported a lot. I would suspect 
this happens more often than what gets reported. Mm. It sounds like a lot of work. It's definitely passive, right. Passive sounds so much easier. Yeah, way, way easier. This is a much more sophisticated attack, obviously. Sure. Right. Uh, so if you're seeing this, it's going to be like nation state actors, APT, advanced uh, persistent threats. Mm -hmm. It's like some super high level hacking skills that are associated with this type of threat. I like the examples that you pulled up for the other one. Do you mm -hmm. have that for this yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, I got one for this one as well. Let me Same. jump over here. This is uh, from Sands Institute, right? They're a great uh, organization, give us a lot of good information. What you need to know about the Solar Winds supply chain attack. Solar Winds had a huge supply chain attack that happened to them. That's why I kind of used the uh, vendor with the United States government at that because this actually occurred uh, quite recently, right? So you can see this was in December 15th of 2020 where they were talking about the fallout and the, um, all the details of the solar winds breach. What happens or what happened was attackers gained access to solar winds software that was being used by the government. They were able to backdoor that software, install malware that gave them access to it, right? That was being installed by the United States government. Through that, they were able to infiltrate into the treasury department, I do believe. Yes, the Treasury Department, and uh, you know, do all sorts of crazy stuff. This is apparently APT Group Twenty Nine, also known as Cozy Bear. <laughs> yeah, they get great names. <laughs> I love the names that the APTs get, and they talk about Solar Winds. So I'll put the link to this article in there. But that is a, a a real life case study of what happens when a supply chain attack does occur and is propagated. It's super devastating. This is definitely one of the more impactful attacks that has happened in history. So read up on this. this is a good article. You'll, you'll learn a lot about it. All right. Thanks for going over all those with us. Glad to do it. So we talked about passive attacks, active attacks, right? And the difference between those. Close in attacks, insider attacks, distribution attacks, here an attack, there an attack, everywhere an attack, attack. <laughs> <laughs> Lions and tigers and attacks, oh my. Oh, thanks for hanging out with us. We'll see you again soon on IT Pro TV. Thank you for watching IT Pro TV.